In this section, we're gonna walk through the process of creating a shot from the ground up. We'll be showing you how to animate a simple camera move, incorporate motion capture, and how to make important tweaks using keyframe animation. I'll guide you through each step as we work on the shot. So we're gonna be starting with shot 10, which we blocked out previously. So make sure to go back and watch that if you haven't already, as we'll be taking it from there and gradually refining things as we go along. So you can see we've got our initial camera and character blocking in place. We've added some lighting using the viewport shader to get that high noon feel and all of our props are linked in. The next step is to get the characters and the camera animated. Now for this particular shot, we'll be relying on motion capture to drive the storytelling with perhaps some additional keyframe animation layered on top. If you want to see how to retarget mocap with AutoRig Pro, we've already covered that in episode three. So feel free to check that out. Now let's go ahead and append in our animation actions. To do that, you can go to File, Append, and navigate to the latest version of your blend file where your actions were retargeted and saved. We're going to bring in the preparing to fire action that we've got prepped for both our hero and the villain. Now that we've got those animations loaded, we can head into the NLA editor and assign them to the correct tracks. You can do this by selecting the character's rig in the NLA editor, clicking add and pressing add tracks. Then you can click onto the new NLA track, click add again, and you can then choose your motion capture from that list. After bringing it in, I noticed some hand positioning issues have been caused by the character's hands being set to IK mode when the motion capture was originally targeted using the FK hands preset. We can quickly fix this by snapping the hands to FK in the Tools tab. So let's jump into the camera view and see how it looks. So I quite like this framing and I like how we can see the villain focusing on Wyatt through the gap in between Kane's arm and his weapon. When it sort of comes to composition, it's always important to think about the story. What's the purpose of this shot that we're creating? So for us, it's to show that the villain is preparing to draw his weapon. Here we've got 55 frames of animation, but since it's a looped motion capture, we can extend this to give us a little bit more time. Looking at the shot in its current state, it feels a bit flat. There's not really any tension currently. This is where references from other films like classic westerns can be quite helpful and also referring back to our storyboard. I think we sort of need to reveal the weapon more gradually. A slow camera move tracking down towards the gun will help to give us that tense and dramatic reveal of the action that's about to take place. So let's set up a simple camera animation. We can key in the final framing and then go back to the start position and key that in. And we can do that by moving the Z axis to lift the camera up. Right away, you can notice that the camera move is currently too quick and it's ramping up and down at the beginning and end of the move. So what I'm gonna do is change the interpolation of the first keyframe to linear at the beginning and then make sure it eases out at the end so that we settle nicely on the gun. We'll stretch out the camera's keyframes as well across the timeline to slow the move down and that will help to build the anticipation as we descend down towards the weapon. Now you'll notice how the tension immediately builds just by slowing down the shot. The anticipation of what's about to happen is going to create the drama. And you don't want to rush moments like this, especially when it's building towards that key action. With that all set, we have a nice drawn out camera move that lands perfectly on the villain's gun and creates a solid sense of tension. I've also just gone ahead here and applied the relevant motion capture to our hero too. In terms of shot creation, less is more. You want to convey as much story as possible in as few shots as is actually necessary. Story-wise, this camera move we've just made tells the audience that the villain is considering initiating a gunfight. As a previous shot creator, it's vital to always be considering the story beats and how we're going to show them on screen. So at this point now, I'm just going to turn the shadows back on. I'm going to adjust the depth of field and I'm going to animate the camera focus to shift from the hero to the weapon as the shot progresses. This subtle focus shift is going to help to guide the viewer's eye towards the important action. 
And that's pretty much it for this shot. It's now ready to be rendered. I'm going to talk you through how to render a play blast using Prism and how to go about burning in your metadata to the play blasts, which provides useful information about the render and is crucial for a client to have for editing purposes. To add in the metadata, you can go into the output tab and scroll to the bottom and drop down the metadata section. In here, you'll have many options for metadata you can include in the render. So make sure to select whichever options you need showing up. Then at the bottom, make sure to check on the burn into image, which means that all of this data you've selected will now be displayed on the render itself. So now we've chosen our metadata, you can just go to the Prism tab and go into the State Manager. From here, we can go ahead and click Play Blast. We need to make sure that our frame range is set to the start and end points, and you can choose Scene, which will automatically set this for you. You can also set your resolution and choose the camera that you want the shot to be rendered from. You can also set your output from here too. Either MP4 or JPEG image sequence works fine. Remember, you don't need to touch Blender's output render settings at all, as Prism will take care of it all for you. Once you're set, you can just go ahead and render the shot out inside of the State Manager by right-clicking and pressing Execute. Once the play blast is completed, you can hit the little arrow here and you can go directly to the media browser in Prism, which will display the latest and all previous versions of your play blasts and renders. So if you prefer to render image sequences instead of MP4s or MOVs, that's fine too. Prism actually allows you to convert from image sequences at any time inside of the media browser. You can do this simply by right clicking in the thumbnail window, heading to convert, and then just selecting whichever file type you want to convert your image sequence to. All right, so before we begin moving forward with creating more shots for this sequence, we've just received news from the client that their modeling team has provided us with updated assets of the town, complete with much higher texture qualities and denser mesh. So now we're gonna replace the old blockout version that we created with these new detail models. So let's start by jumping into the latest version of our town asset file where we blocked it out and published the town originally. But now thanks to the client's modeling team, we've got a collection of new buildings with a lot more detail and the textures. So what we're gonna do is import these new assets that we've received from the client folder that we made in our Prism project. You may receive this in many different ways and it could be a variety of file types such as FBX, OBJ, Alembic, GLB, and a few more. For us, we've just received one FBX file that seemingly contains all of the new assets from the town. Then you can just click import and you can see how the updated buildings already look a lot better. Before we move forward, let's just make sure to move this FBX from the client space folder into our resources folder that we have set up, just to make sure that everything stays neat. Now to update the assets across all shots, we'll just remove the old blocked version of the town that we made previously and that we're linking in originally inside of the Western Town Blockout collection. And we can replace those with the new assets from the collection that we receive from the client. So here is the new collection that contains all of the updated assets. All we need to do is drag this into the folder where the original linked collection is located and remove anything else inside of it. Once you've done this, all you have to do is go into your State Manager in the Prism Settings tab and just do another Blend File Export. So now Prism knows that this collection has been updated and it will mitigate these changes out to any shots where the town was linked into. If we jump back into the shot, you can now see our linked collection has been fully updated with the new assets. Everything is carried through seamlessly. Every shot that contains this town, as long as it was linked, whether through Prism or the Asset Browser, now reflects the new models and textures.